Hey everyone, ever wondered why some detailers seems to know which polishing combination to go with whenever they are polishing a car? It's like they are right on the dot when it comes to polishing a flawless car. While for some, they seem to struggle to find the right polishing combination. Of course, experience and familiarity would take a chunk out of the guessing game away and narrow down several combinations so you don't have to try a million of polishing combinations before getting the right polishing combination. My intention today is to enlighten you and hope that it will instill a deeper understanding on polishing combination and that you too, one day, with practice, can be as good as a professional detailer. I'll be focusing on a combination of pads and cutting abrasive, while the choice of machine and techniques also affects cutting, but that's another video for another day. So get a paper or book and a pen. You will want to write notes for this episode. Let's begin. Here's the bad news. There is no fixed formulation in polishing because a singular variable would affect the outcome of polishing in many ways. But there is good news. There are guidelines that can be helpful and making things way easier. But before we start, here are things we should know and would affect polishing combination. Number one, cutting strengths of pads. Number two, cutting strengths of abrasive. Number three, combination and cutting strengths of pad and abrasive. Number four, cutting results and leftover defects. And finally, number five, it's pain hardness. Throughout these explanations, I'll be using a simple technique to help you in mapping and categorizing each factors. It is an extremely simple approach, but a useful learning tool that I find help to simplify things. Uh, it is also something simple that everyone can do. First, cutting strengths of pads. If pads has unique and different level of cuts, of course, naturally, if we have a less aggressive pad, the cutting would be lesser and vice versa. The easiest way to determine a pad is to seek or to ask the seller directly. You should also categorize it based on the pads you possess. Since these are the pads that I have in possession, um, I will use this as an example. At this stage, to make things simple, I would first divide it into three sections. This section will each represent a different tier. Maybe this will be aggressive, this will be medium, and this would be a mild cutting pad. Leveling pads are what I deem as aggressive. So I would have the denim and velvet pad at the higher end of the aggressive tier. Perhaps what you have might not be leveling pad, perhaps it's a wool pad. If so, just place the wool pad on the aggressive section. There is no wrong or right about this since everyone would have different type of pads. So for microfiber, I would categorize it as medium. Um, so to the medium section it goes. Occasionally, you might have a variation of microfiber polish and microfiber cutting pad. They are sort of similar, but render different level of cut. So if you want to take notice of it, uh, mine is considered a cutting one. This is an example. This is a cutting microfiber pad. So I would place it in the medium section. For foam pads, I would consider denser foam to be medium in its cutting ability. So denser foam or medium cutting foam would actually go here. While the softer or the medium soft and soft foam, I would place it on the soft tiers. At this point, you will find that there are numerous pads on the same tier. So what we need to do here is actually to arrange within the same tier uh, with the more aggressive selection being at the high end range while the lesser aggressive one at the lower range. So for example, denim is more aggressive than velvet. So the denim would actually be placed first and then repeat the same step for the other two tiers. The name, Velvet, the Nano Woo. So from this end, this is the most aggressive, this is the less aggressive. It's also worth mentioning that generally, Woo pads are more aggressive than microfiber cutting pads. And foam pads are usually equally or less aggressive than microfiber cutting pads. But it's not always the case. The takeaway from this is that you should know your most aggressive pad to the least aggressive pad in an arrangement like this. Before I proceed, I would like to first define that when I mention compound abrasive and polish abrasive, these are two different level cuts of abrasive. For compound, they have higher cutting strength, while for polish, it is a finer abrasive. Both the compound and the polish are known as cutting abrasive. So we are essentially repeating this, but instead of pads, we are arranging the cutting abrasive. Arrange the cutting abrasive from the most aggressive to the least aggressive. 
For example, the cutting abrasive I have here, I would arrange in this manner because I understand Austrian products well. The easiest way to identify is actually through asking your product supplier. Uh, if you happen to have different types of cutting abrasive, you will still need to differentiate it and arrange it by cut level. It is actually easier if you have less cutting abrasive product because less is more. If you don't know, the only way to determine it is to actually using it. And I would suggest using the same pad to determine the cutting strength. Now, coming back to the arrangements of aggressiveness. Once you sorted out both pads and polish, things will definitely get smoother from here. So, let's talk about combination of cutting abrasive and cutting pads. Naturally, if you pair an aggressive pad with uh, an aggressive polish or compound, you will get a lot of cutting and vice versa. A trick that I like to share during our training workshop is that I would have our participants giving each pad and cutting abrasive a number uh, from the scale of 1 to 10. The more aggressive it is, the higher the number should be. So for example, I would give each and every of these pads and cutting abrasive a number. Higher cut means higher number. Lower cutting means lower number. Now, the number does not matter. It does not have to be exact, but it has to make sense. For example, if this is the most aggressive pad that I have, uh, I'm going to put it at a scale of 10. The lowest, probably 1. The rest, somewhere in between. And if your collection of pads and polishes or cutting abrasive are greater, you could go with 15 or 20. Just make sure that higher number means the more aggressive it is. Once you have figures for both pads and cutting abrasive, the number would be an indication for the cut level. Again, I reiterate, this is supposed to be an indication, not an exact cut level. So, for example, if I were to use the yellow polishing foam uh, paired with a now 38, this is 38, um, I would get a cut level of 5. Now, this combination does not have sufficient cut. If I wish to increase my cut, I have two choices here. I can choose a different pad with a different cut, maybe this, or I can choose a different abrasive that has higher cut to increase my cut, maybe this. So maybe this round, I'll switch up to the higher cutting pad, a blue Euro foam, um, paired with the same abrasive of now 38. Do a quick polish and check on my work. This is option one. Or I could use back the same pad, which is the yellow polishing foam, but with a different polish or cutting abrasive of now 46, which is this. Now, both are going to give me higher cut. The result might be different in terms of cutting level and result, but it is the basis that needs to be first understood. And the real result is only possible to tell when we actually use and try it on the paint. I would also like to add that there might be times where certain cutting abrasive will not go well with any pads or certain pads. For example, if you try to use the leveling cutting abrasive with a foam pad, you would still be able to cut, but it is going to be an inconsistent cut that might contribute more problem than solution. Certain producers when developing certain cutting abrasive have different intention and system to go with it. But again, on the compound and polish grade abrasive, oftentimes wool to foam pads or microfiber cutting pads are considered a safe spot. I hope by now you have a basic idea of combination and cut level. Point number four, cutting results and leftover defects. This is equally important when observing the combination that we paired. Um, cutting results based on the combination we have, we need to identify if the combination produced sufficient cut, insufficient cut, or over cut. Now, this allowed us to understand the type of paint that we are working on and how to adjust our combination of pads and cutting abrasive. When we achieve sufficient cut, we will notice improvement from the original defects. This is also why we need to assign a test panel every time before we polish a car to find out the best polishing combination of pad and polish. Most of the time, sufficient cutting will also produce its own defect. But the rule of thumb here is that it should be a lighter defect and the original defect should be at least removed to a great extent. Now, if the paint you are working on has swirled, assuming you achieve sufficient cutting, 
the appearance of micro swirl, haze or hologram is considered as normal and you have achieved sufficient cutting. Occasionally, sufficient cutting will also likely to remove only partial defects. This usually happens on harder paints. It removes defects but not entirely. A second pass is required with the same combination and this would likely do the trick. Sufficient cut means reaching a near equal of cutting strength that removes a certain depth of defects. Insufficient cutting is pretty straightforward. Basically, there will be no change of state of defects or only the final defects are removed while the deeper defects remain unchanged. Overcut is when the combination generates new and or more defects. It could be light marring that you are trying to polish but end up with a DA swirl or swirl if you are using a rotary. It could be trying to polish a light scratch but end up with heavy swirls. Overcut is interesting because sometimes overcut is needed to remove deeper defects before refining it. For example, if you have a deep scratch, you might actually use a sandpaper and that sanding mark is considered as overcut as well. Usually defects above the swirl marks such as scratches and deep etchings, overcut is likely to occur because we are removing a thicker layer of clear coat. But generally for paint correction, if you are trying to remove swirl or other light defects, overcut is not what you should try to achieve. The fifth one, pain hardness. You might be able to tell a pain is hard or soft the moment you make the first passing in polishing. But I'm highlighting this as the last topic because paint hardness also affects the combination of polishing or finishing. We brought up many aspects of paint hardness in many of our past previous videos. But for the sake of revision, here are the differences between hard paint and soft paint. When it comes to hard paint, more cuts are required to remove the defects if we compare it to soft paint. But when it comes to refining the paint after the initial compounding or cut, the step down is likely not to be a huge leap. I'll explain. On hard paints, obviously the leftover defects would be lesser after the initial cut or compounding, especially if we are using a dual action polisher. Micro swirls from DA might be present. And if I were to choose a lesser cutting combination, I might only need to step down a little and switch my choice of pad rather than both the abrasive and pad. You heard me right, it is possible that on hard paint, I'll be using the same cutting abrasive to compound and to polish or to refine. Now quick cut 48 is considered as an aggressive compound grade abrasive. But on hard paint or scratch resistant paint, it can also be used to polish the paint with mere switch of pad. It's not always the case that we use a compound first, then switching to a polish to finish the paint. At the end of the day, it is all about cutting strength that is right for the paint condition. On softer paint, however, the step down might be a larger leap. I could possibly start with a now compound 46 with a wool pad to compound, and on the finishing step, I would switch both the pad and choice of abrasive to finish. So in short, soft paint are more sensitive to changes of combination. Lastly, before ending this off, is that practicing trial and error will eventually make you better in polishing. Be sure to inspect the paint with proper lighting and with diluted usage of IPA. Congratulations if you have watched up to this point of the video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop us an email at support at austrian.com. Drop us a like if the video helped you. Liking our video means that you will be recommended to more individuals like you and subscribing to our videos means that you will get more first-hand video like this notified to you. That's all we have for you today. Okay, thanks. Bye.